holy man, man, that is rugged coffee. Yeah, I got a little carried away last wow. night. Wow, that that is really strong. You put some hair on your beard. I guess it will make me grow one. <laughs> Good morning. <sighs> Weather looks pretty good out there, huh? Yeah, nine degrees yeah. Fahrenheit. Bright and bright with the moon out last night. Wicked. Well, good morning. Good morning to you. We are cooking some breakfast. Donnie's driving that first cup of coffee in Nome. I got a little carried away last night when I made that. I kind of knew it. It happens sometimes. It was the end of a bag of coffee, so I just put the rest in. It kind of overflowed, so the la I'm pretty sure your last couple sips, Donnie, you'll be chewing on that coffee. Yeah, probably, yeah. <laughs> I think there's some grinds in it. Yeah, that's all right. Good night's sleep. Fire went out, I'm guessing, I don't know, geez, probably maybe 11. I woke up around 1 and felt that it was cold, put a winter hat on, and then around 3, 3.30, I woke up, made a new fire, and then it's 5.30 now, and... The fire was still going, so you get a cup more than two hours out of it. It warms the place up pretty good, but it's something you have to tend. You know, you have to, you'd have to be up every four hours. About like having a baby, I imagine. I don't have any babies, so I don't quite know. I guess you probably get up more than four hours with a baby. Yeah, yeah I think so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when I raised that baby squirrel, I had to get up every two hours to feed the damn oh, no thing. Kidding. Yeah, oh yeah, when it when its eyes were shut, still, ah, you know. Wow. Yeah, it was every two hours. So that's my about all I I know about raising babies, is I found a baby squirrel. Didn't even know if it was a gray or a red. It was so small. Didn't have any hair. Eyes were shut, and I raised the thing. Turned out being a gray squirrel. It was a pretty awesome pet, but I had to let it go because it was to me it was either put it in a cage the rest of its life or let it live free and I'd rather it live free because once it got old enough it could go wherever it wanted and chew wires and I didn't want it chewing wires right. but that was fun Pat remember that yeah I do I do remember that yeah, yeah. that was that was a great it, yeah, I'm surprised you could feed it a formula that it would survive on when it was real small yeah you had to give it um it was they can't drink cow milk or they get uh, metabolic bone disease oh no kidding yeah so it was a puppy starter formula huh yep yeah, so that's what that was the only thing i could get it okay. and i had like a little eyedropper and i would it would grab that eyedropper and, oh, <laughs> and wow. suck all the milk right out of it and wow i think the first real food it ate were little pieces of apples yeah and then graduated up to peanuts and whatever yeah but i'd get home the thing would run right up my leg and sit on my shoulder I know, and I on my that. hat yeah right it'd ride in my pocket everywhere right. yeah it's a hell of a good pet but yeah yeah i just figured it wasn't right to cage it right yeah you were his mama yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh that's great yeah yeah that was that that's fun yeah but no that squirrel so when i went to let it go I probably didn't want to, didn't know what to do with it. It, it kind of knew, but I brought it over to my parents because they got all those oak trees. Yeah. And they had a pretty good population of gray squirrels. And it was full grown at that point. And I stuck it to the oak tree. Yeah. At about head level. And I said, well, if you go up and don't come back down, I said, you're free. If you come back down, then we're going to have to figure out a new living arrangement. Yeah. And it climbed up that tree and oh my god fell right in love with the branches and jumping all around and i i called for it for i had a little remorse right away like oh man i kind of want it back now right i didn't yeah. want to let it go even though i wanted to right but i yeah. called for it and called for it and she sat there looking at me and she stayed so i said well you stay then and and my parents saw her for geez quite a few years yeah Yep, she so would. The other squirrels accepted. Yep. Accepted them. Yep, they did, and she ended up being like alpha female after a while. And oh no kidding. Yeah, my parents and my sister would feed it, and she'd eat peanuts and bird seed right off the deck, and. Yeah. Yep. Oh, so a couple of years anyway, they they yeah. could tell which one it was, and right. she was so much bigger than the other ones. Yeah. Because she got, had gotten fed a lot easier than. Right. Than finding it in the wild, so they could tell which one it was. She was huge. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. She had a good start. Nice. Yep. Well, she wouldn't have had any start if it hadn't been for you finding it. Yeah, she fell out of a nest, I guess, and 
Huh. And the you, you 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 said it was in the swampy area. No, that one was like right at the scoop. Oh, that was a yeah, scoop. Oh. yeah. Like the daycare found it. Oh, okay. Yep, and with uh with squirrels, it's not like birds where the scent, the mother won't take it back because of the scent. Yeah. With squirrels, it's the opposite. It's um if they get cold, if the baby's cold at all, they won't take it back. Oh no! Kidding. Yeah, it's it's like a temperature thing because yeah. I guess it's dead if it gets too cold. Uh, wow! Yep. So I had a little heater for it and a shirt, a little yeah. blanket. It slept in a cardboard box with a. I used my uh, the plug for my computer has like one of those square power generator things that yeah. was that was warm but never hot. So I put that under a shirt and she'd sleep on top of that to oh, stay wow. warm. Yeah. yeah, I remember. It's pretty cool, her running and, and sitting on your shoulder. Right? Yeah. It, the funniest thing is when she'd be in my pocket and I'd have full face conversation with somebody for 10 minutes and then they wouldn't know it and then she'd pop right out of the front pocket <laughs> 10 minutes into a conversation and they'd, what the heck? She was sitting there the whole time. Ah. Now, yeah. Those were the funniest for me. Yeah. Because I knew eventually she'd pop her head out and look for something to eat. Right. Pretty cool. Yeah. All right, there's the first plate going out. Yeah. Boy, that's a lot of grub. Yeah. Holy mackerel. I'll be set for all day with that. I'm hoping you need to store the energy because we're going to be chasing flags with fish today. Really? Oh, that's a good, good sign. Yesterday yeah. we chased some flags. We'll get some crappies, hopefully. Oh, yeah. For a nice meal. Oh, man, I hope we get a sure lunch today. Yeah. That would be awesome. <laughs> Working pretty good. Let's get this baby fired up. Pretty chilly out here today. We got single digits. We're looking at eight degrees Fahrenheit. Everything froze up pretty good that that uh, melted or slushed a little bit yesterday. So as you can see with the sled throwing out some exhaust. <laughs> Check it. I think we've given him enough time. Oh, he is off to the side. There might be something on there. If you feel them, give them oh, a Oh yeah, it's hard to feel. Give them a wicked hard hook. So. Got them? Yep. Well, yeah, that's just, uh, can't be a good bite. Did he spit it? Well, no, he spit it. Spit it. He was on there. Yeah, he was. He put the hook back into him, you know. bottom then come up foot yeah so. well you can you're gonna see your bait so you you can put it like right in front of the fish yeah I got one looking already here it comes see your bait dropping right here Donnie no. right on my tip see that blob got one you got one that didn't take long did it all right wait just stop, 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 stop. You got one, a big one to your left, see it? Yeah. Yeah, this is the eater size right there. Yeah. Perfect eater size. All right, we're on the board. So you see your bait now? Yeah. So you can go down until you get close to some fish. And you never want to get below them. You got one coming over to look at you, so Yep, yeah, right about there, and then just kind of twitch it. And then I usually hold it still right when it gets near the fish. 
and you'll just watch your tip. Okay, he's coming in to eat. So you could either watch your tip or feel for it and lift a little bit. All right, just to stop moving it, stop. Oh, you got him, set, yep, yeah, the boy. Good job. That's, oh, came off. oh, he's right under you, go ahead and drop her. Oh, we got a pile coming in now. Right there, yeah. Okay, that one saw you. He's coming in. All right, you should have a hit right now. And a lot of times if you just watch your tip, or you slowly lift, they'll hit on a lift like this. We're pretty deep, so. Got him. This feels decent. It's another decent eater. Oh yeah, perfect eater size. Yeah, once you figure out the feel of that bite, you'll you'll get every one of these. And then I usually slow it down when they're right on it yeah. so they can eat. And if I don't know if they've eaten, I slowly lift like this. And then usually you can feel them like that hit. This one's smaller. Oh, he's getting bigger. He'll eat. Ooh, nice one under you. All right, so I'd stop moving it. Just wiggle a little tiny bit. Watch your tip. Did he hit? Yep, hit him. That a boy. Nice. Oh, we had a double. Yeah, you got a good one there, Donnie, it looks like. That looks like a good size one. Oh, it's a yellow. yellow. Nice. <laughs> we'll eat him for sure. Really? Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Heck yeah, show that to the camera. Nice ring perch. Yeah, we got some yellows on us now. That was a good one looking, I think. You got a good one? Yeah, you do, yep. All right, watch your tip. He you should be on. That a boy, yep. No. Oh, I yeah, you got him. Nice. That'll, that'll eat. A lot. Yeah, he's not big, but it'll eat. Is that your first crappie ever? It's the first one I've ever caught. Yeah. Nice. In fact, I never even really heard much about crappies until you told me about them. Yep. It's not the first one you've eaten. No. No. You've, you've kept me supplied on that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there you go. Did you see him hit your tip? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Should be a crappie, I think. White fat. White? No. Yeah. Too little. Yeah, that one's small. I got something decent here, I'll tell you that. Hopefully it's a big one. Another eater. That could be why we're not getting too many pike bites. They got a lot of bait down there. <laughs> nice. Crappy? Uh, I don't know. Yep. Hey. <laughs> what? Yeah. What do you think, eater size or a little too I don't small? Know. He's pretty small, isn't he? Send him back. Oh, that guy hit pretty good. <laughs> he hit hard. He's fighting like a yellow. I don't know, though. Nope. Oh, he's like borderline eater. What do we got in here? Oh, uh, borderline. We'll, we'll keep them. Guys, we're having an awesome morning. Had uh, five or six flags go up, but no, no results. The pike are just not feeding. They're just kind of messing with the bait a little bit, getting a taste and spitting it. But the cool thing about being here several days is at some point they will feed. We just got to be ready for them when they do. 
But Donnie and I just did some jigging. That was the first jigging Donnie's done. And he he got it really quickly. He caught a really nice uh, crappie, some nice yellow perch, and he caught white perch too. So we got a pile of fish. We're gonna fly up and do a little shore lunch, have a fire, a little David Dudley style smudge fire. And I'm gonna cook him up some of that fish for lunch. Well, we're getting ready for lunch. We still got a little bit of time, but took down a old, old, old dry dead pine that was standing. And Donnie's got a little, little spot over here where he's gonna make a little blaze for us. The fishing has not been great. We had one flurry at about 9.30. Uh, he set into a couple, which, they just, they're not feeding right now. We only had one take a bait and run and it dropped it. So I think this major bluebird sky and create, and we got an east wind going pretty hard out there. Two things really working against us, but that's not gonna stop us from fishing. It just might stop us from catching a lot of fish. We jigged for about a half hour on the pan fish and really did well. We whacked them, we caught enough for lunch and that's what the, the goal was. And we got out of the wind and came back in. We're going to set up the fire. I just wanted to show you this little thing. This was a gift given to Joey by some people from, I think, Maryland or somewhere. But it's called the Green Hornet. And on the way up here, we broke it. And we were going to jig with it. But in the film Grumpy Old Men, I don't know if you've ever seen that movie, Walter Matthew and, and uh, Jack Lemon were the stars of it. It's a great movie, and there was some ice fishing scenes in that movie which are really comical. And uh, if you haven't seen the movie, you ought to see it. But they had a, a rod just exactly like this. And uh, in the movie, you know, somebody got pissed off at somebody else, and and uh, it got broken. So I just wanted to show you that, and I wish, we're gonna fix it when we get home, but we gotta drill this out and and uh, add this on. But uh, if you haven't seen the movie, see it, because it's really worth it. I couldn't find anything. Well, we'll figure it out. Well, we'll rub two sticks together. Yeah, either that or two nickels if we got them. Yeah, I don't even have a nickel to my name. <laughs> you ain't got two nickels to rub no, together? No, I haven't got two nickels. Oh, jeez. I'm, <laughs> I'm poorer than poor. <laughs> How poor are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so poor. <laughs> oh. God, uh, jeez, isn't this unbelievable? <laughs> it's so nice out of It's the too wind. good for fishing. Yeah. I think that's uh, that's the whole trouble. you got to be on a miserable, cold, Absolute snowy, Absolute bluebird sky. Day. Look at that bluebird sky. Yeah. East wind. Unreal. Unreal. Yeah. We had our opportunity. That was it for the whole week. Yeah. Yeah. Three flags and... Went Tomorrow about they're the same feed. time. We might we might get a little run today around noon. Usually once you start cooking or doing something oh, fun. Oh yeah, when you yeah doing well, something important. Yeah, they'll hit. So let's do something important then. Let's get that fire going. All right, let's um, do it. Well, we'll see if we can make it go.
This wood is bone dry. It ought to go. She froze up already? What's that? She froze already? Would you lucky there? Frozen. much meat left on that thing. I'd call it none. All right, so I'll show you how David does it. Yeah. Equal sheets like that. Yeah. To help them burn them and stuff. Put a decent amount of fish in there. We'll probably cook this in two different sections. Take the pine needles out or leave them Is that in. that the yellow perch? That would be, yep, that would be the yellow perch. The whitest meat is actually the yellow perch. Is oh, that about really? half? Is that about half? I would say, yeah. All right, so we got the layout and David by accident left his special spice mix here. Oh wow. So we're gonna use some, then we're gonna use re- We're gonna send it to a chemist and find out what's in it? Reverse engineer it. Yeah. So what you wanna do is cover that up with David's special blend. We'll do one with David's and one without. We'll just do another, a different mix. All right. So we got that. Some butter. See if I remember how he did this. He throws the pads right to him. As they say, butter makes it better. Right? And then he turned the rest into a boat. Kind of like a boat. butter in there, top and bottom. And if I remember right, it kind of went like this. And that's it. Okay. That's all he did for the first one. All right. Holy mackerel. I don't know what it is, so I just brought it all out. But Holy. This is what we got. Oh, that's oregano probably. Looks like it anyway. Basil or oregano? Not sure. Basil? I guess. Well, whatever it is, we're putting some in. Yeah. Parsley? I don't think parsley has any taste, does it? No, I wouldn't bother with parsley. We're not even going to bother. A little bit of oregano, because I just love oregano. Lemon, Lemon and pepper seasoning. Well, that ought to be good on uh, fish. And then this one's a super secret one. Great salt bay seasoning, smoked 
maple garlic. Oh, wow. I probably should have only put that wow. on. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty good. I'd say. We've got a variety of flavors yep. going to go there. We sure do. So I'm going to boat this up. At the end so the butter can't come out. Right. Over. And while I can think of it, I'll put a little salt and pepper on David's because I think I remember him doing that. And that's it. That's great. But there's one more thing we got to do first. We got to do one more for something really special. I went in the woods earlier while you went on your ride. Donnie and I found an okra tree. Oh jeez. I found an okra tree. Oh that my was, word. That was in season. Oh, you don't put too many on for me, I can tell you that. You don't know what's good for you. I cannot handle okra. You've never had it. I have, I tried it. But, uh, so there was an okra tree up in the woods that was that was blossoming. Oh, really? Blooming. Wow. So I uh, picked those this morning. A late bloomer. Yep. Well, since David's from the south, you know what? Let's put some southern spices on that. Sea salt. Pocket lint. What do you think? A little basil? If you like it. I like everything. That's it. All right. Okay. So we're good I to go the, here. I think the fire is probably about right. Might be too hot. I don't know. Can it be too hot? I don't think it can be too hot. Okay. The middle one's the okra. And David always, David was worried about the butter burning yeah. and getting too hot. So we're going to keep an eye on it. Listen for that butter to sizzle. So do, you, do you turn this or do you just... No, you don't. It won't be turned. It just... So being in that tin foil... Yeah. It's like a broiler, like an right, oven. Right, right. I'm going to go a little higher. There we go. I think I hear it sizzling already, so that's too hot. Yeah. Want to wait till it burns down? Yeah, we're gonna. I think we better. I'll put those to the outside. Yeah. But you so see, you want that butter to melt in, soak into the meat. Yeah. And, and kind of boil, broil. And of course, the moisture in the fish will cause steam and yeah. and cook. It doesn't doesn't take long to cook fish. No. Well, you won't get fish much fresher than that. Nope. You got nothing to say? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you had something to oh, say. Oh, oh. I didn't know you were such a good cook. Well, you haven't eaten any yet. <laughs> Yeah, you can hear the butter kind of. Yeah, sizzling's okay, I think. Yeah.
Oh, we got a high flyer too. Yeah, I watched it. My one way out. That's a big pike. Uh, let me think for a second. What's that? Let me think for a second what we should do. The fish is almost done. We could probably run out and catch this fish. Uh, and I'll just take this off. No, or burn. Okay, it should be okay left just like that. Let's go get this big fish. We got a high flyer. Spice drawer. So I got the fish off and I got the okra on. Of course we'd get a flag, right? Yeah. You know it. We shouldn't complain though. No, we'll take it. This is gonna be a great pike. Check it. This one was way up high. Is it just barely tripped? Oh, he might be on there. If you feel him, hit him high. You feel him? Yeah. Still got him? Yeah. And just throw it right to the side. Doesn't. Ah, you got your first bike. <laughs> hey! <laughs> nice. We'll take it. Oh wow! Good job. Super. Wow. All right, Donnie. First bike. All right. Yeah. Got to start somewhere, right? Yeah. He did not run anywhere, did he? No, he just stood out the bait. So. The best way is to prop that open. Oh, wow. Yep. So it's a single hook. Yeah. And if they have bigger gills, you can get in there easier. But I'm, see how I'm under, through the gills? Right. And you flip it back, and it's just as easy as that. Best way to release anything. Oh, wow. Nice. Hey. First pike. You'd have to really hold that one out to make him look big. You sure would. <laughs> right out here. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> cool, I'm glad you got one. Yeah, well, I don't know, that's great. Yep, so then those just close up. We're gonna throw them back? Yeah, might as well. If you want to close those, yep. Yeah. And I'll let you let them go if you want. Oh, go ahead. You got it. Now, how do you distinguish between a pike and a pickle? So these dots are not connected. See those dots? Yeah. That's one thing. They don't have the teardrop coming down. They call it a mustache right there. And then these are not connected. Whereas on a pickerel, they call it a chain pickerel. Right. Because they right. connect like a chain. Okay. And then you also have the lines on all the fins too. Okay. So those are three things to look for. Yeah. There you go. There we go. Good job, Donnie. All right. First one. Super. Nice. That's great. Absolutely the way it always goes is... When you don't want a flag, you get one, but we'll take it. We're not complaining. We we haven't, that was the first fish of the day, other than the jig rod stuff. So, came back to check on the fish, see how it did. I kind of took it off and left the okra on. We'll see how we did while we were away. That looks pretty well done. That looks scrumptious. So that's ready, the stuff with David's. Oh, and this is boiling, the stuff with ours, so definitely, definitely done. We'll take those off. And then the okra. I don't know. I'll have to... Oh, yeah. Wow. Wow, that's good. That's good. Really? Yeah. So you've got different taste buds than I do. Mm. <laughs> Try David's first. You can kind of make sure it gets some butter on it. Yeah, try that. Holy cow. Mostly crappy. Hot. Wow. Really, really 
good. <laughs> Is it edible? Yeah. Those spices are really, <laughs> really tangy. I might have overcooked it a little bit, but whereas it, it couldn't dry out. Mm. Careful you don't get a pellet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah, all right. <laughs> Not like bird hunting. Remember those days? Mm -hmm. Those are always fun. Look at that steaming okra. This one's good too, but this one is a little bit. I like the spices in this one, and David's better. I know, it's way better, isn't it? Yeah. Here, Donnie, try one of them. I'm Just not try, gonna try it. Just try it. Do you like green beans? I like green beans. Oh my god. It's even better. Really? I'll try one just to try shut you one. up. Yeah. Just to shut me up. Is it the worst thing you've eaten? No, I've eaten a lot worse. <laughs> it's something I wouldn't crave, but it doesn't taste bad mm. to me. If you had to eat it to get dessert, would you eat it? Uh huh. <laughs> I'd eat just about anything to get the dessert. Did you guys have to do that growing up? Oh, yeah. Finish your plate. Oh, we had to do it. Yeah. Oh, there was a lot of bribing going on. Yeah. And your mother cooks the the best desserts. I have. she's yeah, in a cookbook that, mm -hmm. that I have. Yeah. So you definitely would have eaten everything, but she was also a great cook too, right? Oh yeah. Really, really good lunch. Donnie, Donnie's mother is still alive. Donnie, are you 80 yet? I'll be 81. 81. 81 next month. Okay, Donnie's 81 next month. His mother is still alive. How old's your mom? 104, and her birthday is in April, so she'll be 105 in April. Wow. Um, Pretty un amazing. Believable. Yeah, I remember seeing his mom mowing her lawn. Uh, five, four, five years ago, right? When she was 99, or was she 100? She, she was 100. She was 100. Yeah, and she, she was... She would walk out <laughs> to the barn where the lawnmower was and mow the lawn. Yeah. And one day she even jumped off the porch onto the mower yep. at 100. And her neighbor was 90, right? Uh, yeah. The neighbor was 10 years younger. Yeah. So she was 90, and they would meet while they were mowing their lawns. Ah. And I said, it had to have been the oldest pair of lawnmowers ever. Right. Oh, the crow's heading out to the ribs. Yeah. I hope he finds them. He saw them. Yeah, in fact, they would compete. You know, the 90-year-old uh, the said, I can't let your mother out, outdo me. <laughs> and they were both really workers physically and and uh, I think that uh, is why they live so long. Mm -hmm. You know, good physical work all their life, active. Yeah, I guess that would be pretty shameful if a hundred-year-old was out working you. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Getting out worked by a hundred-year-old and and your neighbor too. Yeah. So, well, you got to dig in here. Oh, keep going. Eat some keep of going. This stuff. I'm gonna fill up on okra. I want you to get the taste. I want you to hammer on. I was fortunate enough to have that a couple different meals, so I want you to hammer on that Dudley. I almost think he added a little bit of spice after it cooked, too. Yeah. Do you want me to get the, the spice jar, or is it good? No, that's I, just right for me. Stands on its own? Uh-huh. Guys, if you like these kind of catching cooks, just let us know in the comments. If we get enough people that like it, we'll do it again tomorrow. Yeah, I'm going to... Uh... Yeah, we will. And, and tonight's supper, I'm going to make homemade macaroni and cheese. Wow. 
and uh, so uh, stay tuned for that. I don't know, did we talk about that wood stove this morning when we did the intro or or not? Uh, I can't even remember if we talked about it. I don't think we talked much about it. Not much. Okay, so last night was the first night ever for me to have a wood stove in the tent, in the ice fishing tent. Same with Donnie in the ice fishing tent. And it did, it ripped, it did really well. The, um, what do you call it, the baffle or the damper? Damper. They're, they're super sensitive, so you got to get it exactly where you want it to keep the heat in rather than losing the heat and the pipe gets super hot. And then we learned that you can't open the door without opening it or the smoke will back up yeah. into your face. Open the damper for, you know, a couple seconds before you open the door. Yeah, let it get flowing outside. Right, right. But it it drafts really well. Yeah, and it, and it works really super. That's a super little stove. Yeah. And the heat, it maintains the heat really well in the tent. I mean, it lasted quite a while. Yeah, we... I, th I want to say it went out at like 10.30 or 11. We had a pretty early bedtime last yeah. night. I think we were in bed by 7.30. It was, yeah. yeah. So after it, I kind of heard it go out. I thought I heard it go out like the fan stopped going. And I was like, well, I could get up or I could just stay in bed. <laughs> so I stayed in bed. Stayed and then at about 1 o'clock, it got pretty cold. It was 8 degrees. So I, I said, well, you know, we're going to be getting up in a couple hours anyway. So... I got up and restarted the fire at 3.30. And geez, it was at 5.30 when we got up and started cooking, the fire was still yeah, going. Yeah, very comfortable. Yeah, and it was super comfortable. Dry in there, no drips. Pretty awesome. I'm happy with it so far. I mean, actually, it works better than having the propane heated because oh, way you know, better. propane causes moisture. Yeah. And uh, it's certainly a dry heat, you know, yeah. wood heat like that. They ain't doing a thing. Well, the other one wasn't either. I'll, I'll clear the ice out. Get it ready for you. Oh, well, I want you to pull this one. No, I don't want to. I don't like it. You don't like fishing like hurt, that? It hurts my feelings. <laughs> I think he's just straight down. You want to check him? Yeah, the other one was straight down. I mean... Oh, he's off to the side a little bit. Hit him hard like you did last time if, if he's there. Got him? Oh. Oh. Is he st still there? Uh, yeah, he's still All here. All right, you're going to, if he's big one, you're going to have to give him some, some line. Man, they're not running when they're hitting. Uh, I got your line all ready for you if he needs to take some back. Okay. And then just let it go through your hands. But you got, you got wire, I think, on this one. How's he feel? About the same size oh, as okay. the last one. So not giant? He's, yeah. he's, he's fighting better though. Definitely I'm fighting gonna, better. I'm gonna let him go. Let him right? run. Yep. Let him run. Absolutely. They make long runs. Yeah. And then when they stop, you you can make up ground now because he stopped. Yeah. And you want to make up as much ground as you can when they stop. Because they're turning. Yeah. And then he might go past the hole again. Oh yeah, nice one. A little bigger. A little yeah, bigger than the last bigger. one. Oh, he's stuck on the ice. <laughs> oh yeah, look at that. Nice, oh, Donnie. Nice. Heck yeah. Hey, that's All a right, lot, lot better. A <laughs> lot yeah. better than the other yeah, one. Yeah, he's fat too. Yeah. Awesome. I got my catch box. Wow. That's awesome. That is awesome. All right, new PB. Yeah, nice. Five and a half pounder. Five and nice. Half pounder. Probably 30 inches. Yeah. All right, we'll get him back. All right. That's, that's what we want to see, folks. That's what we want to see. Uh, just, oh my God, Donnie, she's making power. Really? She just, oh my God, she's making butter. It's going that way, so come on this side. Okay. And you're gonna hit it, I'm gonna lift this up. It just stopped, so, so go till you feel tension and hit them hard. Go fast till you feel tension and hit them hard. Got them? Yeah. Might want to hit them one more time, and then let it let it out of your hands if you have to. All right. He's dragging. Got some weight. 
Oh, you just caught up here? He did, he's, uh... You got to your bottom market. He came off, huh? Is he on? Oh, there he is. Any size? Couldn't, didn't see him. Oh, he's taking it out of your hand pretty good. <laughs> he just took it all back. Yeah. Same class, you think? How's it uh, feel? I'd say about like the last one yeah. we caught. He looks like he's fighting like that same class of fish. Yeah, he doesn't like... Oh, maybe a little bigger. Beautiful. Yeah, I'd say you just got another PB. <laughs> Good hook set. Yeah, that, that uh, definitely is a better... Yeah, he's six pounds, right? I'd say so. I'd say it's about the same. So I'd say same class. I think he's a little bigger. Nice. Yeah, you hit him good. That thing is awesome. Huh? This kind of fish. Come on. There we go. There we go. Get to the scale. A little heavier. I think he's pushing seven. Definitely over six. Yeah. You're going in the right direction, Donnie. We're on and we're on pounds. Six pounds, one ounce. Oh, he's smaller than no, the other six, one. No, he's bigger. Six pounds, four ounces. Okay. The other was five and a half. Oh, the last one I thought it was six. Nope, five and a five half. Five and a half, okay. Yeah. We're doing better. Yeah, you're, you're going in the right direction. Yeah, I wonder how long he is. I can tell you. You wait one second. I got the technology. What's your guess on length on him? 30? 30? 32? Play him right down. There you go. I'd say 30, 10, 20, 30. Take this out. Right about 30. Yep, right at the 30. Yeah. Nice. Beautiful. You can hold them in here, but you, you've got to be careful because yeah, their gills right. get sharp and you don't want to get a... They get thrashing around. Yeah. All right, buddy. I'm going to let him go for you, okay? All right, good. Good fight. Wow. Nice. Now, that one was up high. Was that... We, did we set this one higher? Uh, I don't remember if we lifted this one or not. We yeah. should start writing in the snow. I don't... I know we set up two or three higher. We're on a nice flurry. We... Donnie and I were just going to move his last trap because we didn't have any action on it. And we, we popped two flags and he popped two fish. He's got 11 and a half pounds and two fish. So pretty sweet and he's going in the right direction. Guys, that release right there, that's all you got to do with a fish. I, it, it frustrates me a little bit when you see guys holding the fish and dipping them and pulling them back and forth and holding them for a long time. The best thing you could do if you want to release and best thing you could do for the fish is just send them back down. There, there's absolutely nothing you're helping them with when you're shaking them and holding them and, and uh, dunking them back and forth. If you want them to live and you want to release them, the best thing is just send them. And they'll, they'll get on their own and they'll figure it out on their own. So don't be afraid to, to let them go if you're going to let them go. Hit it. Got him, little guy. Uh, Tiny. Got to start somewhere, Donnie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That is tiny. Wow, is right. Pretty, though. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine striper for a little guy. Down there. That's an eater size. There's a school of them down there. I got to get down to them. Yeah, we'll keep that. We'll eat him. 
There's a couple more down there. The little, they're not quite as big though. We got some ring perch, guys. We got some yellows. About to get me one. Here we go. Three, two, one. Got him. That's something. Pretty good one here. Yeah. Not quite. Not quite no, enough. this is the male. Males have more meat on them for the for their pound for pound, but the females are a lot bigger. We'll let that one go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven striper. Oh, there's another one. Looking for him. Did he see it? Ooh, pretty good one here, Donnie. Ready? Yeah. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jumbo. Look at that one. Boy. Huh. That's an eater. Oh, there's another one. Do they have different number of stripes on them? Yeah. Almost, almost every single... Oh little guy coming almost every yellow perch has seven stripes yeah and then uh, one youtuber like would made a big deal of it really yeah so now everybody wants to know how many stripes are on it on your perch oh good one coming in coming in hot coming in hot here he comes he sees it three Two, one. This is a good one. Oh no, right at the hole. Oh my God, that was a big one. Come on. Jeez. I wish I didn't even see that one. Golly, that was a good one, Donnie. That was one of the droids we were looking for. Oh, ah. Pike, I'm about to get bit off. That might be a big perch. Or bass. Whatever it is, I got oh, it. Wow. It's big. This, yeah. this cannot be a perch. Holy. It's going to break me off. It's got to be a, maybe a bass. Wow. Wow, that really is. Hope you get to see it. It's, it's, it's a pickerel. Nope. Too. Oh no, don't break me off. <laughs> wow. Chain pickerel. Wow, on that little one. Yeah, on that little jig rod. Got me a chain pickerel, folks. Another really good eating fish, but they're bony. Lucky with that two pound test to land them. Definitely going to have to retie. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Broke it off. Just wow. like that. How do you like that reel compared to the open face? It's got its pros and cons. When it messes up, it's a pain in the... Wow. And it can mess up easy, but it's wicked good for for pinpoint dropping because you just push a button and it drops. Oh, okay. So, like, if you got a fish just under you, you just push a button. You can do everything with one hand. And it's super smooth, and they say it gets less line twists, but I don't know if I believe that. All right, I'm cooking uh, macaroni and cheese for supper, homemade. Uh, and what I do is I put whole milk in a pan, and I got a block of of uh, extra sharp cheddar cheese. Cut it up into strips, break it up, 
add it to the milk and then I heat this until the cheese melts into the milk and it makes a obviously a cheese sauce then I, I put my elbow macaroni I boil it separately get that cooked drain it get another bowl add the cheese stir it up put it in a little oven over here for about a half an hour and on the top of this before I put it in the oven I break up I break up Ritz crackers to put on top which uh, really adds a lot to the macaroni and cheese when it comes out so pretty basically pretty simple meal and uh, pretty quick I so, saw you eating that cheese earlier and I came back and the block was almost gone and I said holy cow he ate I, a lot of cheese I'd be bound up for a month <laughs> that's what I was thinking yeah, too yeah but uh, no it's in this sauce that so. makes more sense now yeah yeah so so that's that's the name of the game for supper tonight sounds good yeah hopefully you'll like it even if you don't you're gonna eat it <laughs> even if I don't I'll say it's good right yeah <laughs> oh, awesome well we got a little bit of daylight left we still have eight sets out we only set oh there's a bald eagle check out this eagle guys that's cool Well, we got a little bit of time left. Like I said, we only set eight lines today because we jumped around, did some jigging here and there, had that incredible shore lunch, David Dudley style. Pretty much had a really fun day. Awesome weather. We got all those bites and all those fish hit exactly when the wind changed 180 degrees. It's not every day you get 180 degree wind change where it was blowing out of the north all morning. Pretty hard too. And then it might've been like a half hour, just like a tide change and it started blowing directly out of the south where it's blowing right now so this is the only day we're supposed to have a little bit of a south wind we might get some snow tonight they said i haven't looked to see how much but anytime you get a, a serious weather direction change like that with the wind you really should expect some seriously good fishing or hunting it just does something to the animals really gets them moving feeding throws them off throws them off their game like they did and then we got all those bites in that pretty much half hour when it changed directions. So always focus on something like that. If it does happen, make sure you got your line wet and you're not sitting on the bank. All right. I got the Brandon box blocking some of the wind. I added a tie down for the south side. Let's see what's going on in here. What's up? Well, I got the macaroni and cheese in the oven. Nice. Yeah. And, uh, Hotter than blue blazes in here. It is. This thing's all frogged up. Oh yeah. But uh, I cooked it on, you know, prepared the two parts on the gas stove and I got that on the oven on the wood stove. So oh, we'll nice. leave it in there about a half an hour, about six o'clock I'd say. Nice. We'll see how it does. Wow. There it is. Macaroni and cheese. Looking good. All right, we're going to dig into this sucker and really, hopefully, enjoy it. <laughs> Be good. It's a, it's a nice comfort food on a cold, windy day. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's quick and easy to make. And this little pan is really chock-a-block full, so... <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to make a mess. That's all right. Maid comes tomorrow afternoon. Okay, great. Wow, does that look good. You even make macaroni and cheese incredible, Donnie. Well, I try to. Try to. You ain't a craft box man, are you? No, no. no. Oh my gosh, I can't handle that, uh, that box stuff. So There's yours. Wow. Jeez, good night, Irene. Thank you. Yeah. What makes this is is the Ritz crackers on top. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that that just adds so much to it, to the flavor and. Yeah, using that nice cheddar cheese helps. Oh, too. nice cheddar, that extra sharp. 
Well, I'd say we, eating wise, we eat a lot better camping than we do at home, don't we? Yeah. I go. mean, had a Staven breakfast this morning. Incredible shore lunch. And yeah. now we're going to have this. Yeah. Hopefully an incredible breakfast tomorrow. Yeah, I haven't told the folks at home what we're doing for breakfast tomorrow. Should I tell them? Might just as well tell them. Yeah. What are we thinking for tomorrow? Yeah, yeah. tomorrow I'm planning on for breakfast. I'm planning on uh, making some homemade donuts. And I'm going to cook up some oatmeal in a double boiler. Just like uh, the old timers used to do. The original Quaker Oats oatmeal. And it tastes so much better for some unknown reason cooking in a double boiler. It cooks slower. There's something about it that really, really uh, makes it. So that's what I'm doing for breakfast while Joey gets the trap set out. Sounds good to me. Well, that's something pretty excellent to look forward to. Yeah. Yep, we'll have to try this, see if it's edible. Is this beard proof? Is it what proof? Beard. Uh, you might get some stuck on there, I don't know. <laughs> wow, those Ritz crackers do really make it, don't mm -hmm. they? Crumbled up on top and baked. Yeah. Donnie got his first pike today. His first crappie today, too. Yeah. I got my first, second, and third pike today. That's right. Yeah. They keep getting bigger. Yep. Can't wait to see what you pull up tomorrow. Yeah, from what, four and a half pounds to six, six and a quarter pounds. Yep. Another secret to making this is when you add the cheese sauce to the cooked macaroni before you put it in the oven, it, it will kind of look like you've got an overabundance of cheese sauce, but you really want an overabundance of it. So, so uh, Float them? You want to float them, yeah. And stir them as you pour the sauce in. It gets the bubbles out of the macaroni and fills the macaronis with cheese. So. You remember my cousin Mikey? Yeah. Did I ever tell you the Fotum story? <laughs> so my uncle Tony, gruff old tough son of a gun, that's his dad, Vietnam vet, several Purple Hearts, just a great guy, strong mm. Italian, yep. Marine, tough, yeah, gruff, right. just Italian, strong Italian, oh, great, yeah. great guy. Yeah. Well, Mikey would come to Maine every year and either he would get it or my parents for as a gift like a Christmas gift yeah once a year would send them down like a quart of real Maine maple syrup okay yeah because he had a taste for it yeah and he knew what was good and what wasn't it wasn't that junk you get in the store right corn syrup right and Mikey could make that quart last a full year he could eat pancakes every day and make that court last a year. It was like gold to him, you know. <laughs> he dri just drizzled yeah. just just enough on. Right. And his dad came over, and he was in the kitchen, and he left the syrup out on the table, and he delivered him his pancakes, and he went back in to cook his own and bring those out. His dad yells, hey, you got any more syrup? Mike's like, what the heck? And he comes out. And the syrup's gone. His dad goes, I like to float them. Oh, and he had oh, that really? whole, he had that whole court oh, just wow. flipped right over. Those pancakes oh, wow. were floating in a deep dish plate oh. with, with <laughs> real maple syrup, about $20 worth of syrup in that. Oh, wow. Yeah, so now anytime I hear, I like to float them, I yeah. think of Tony. <laughs> Mike. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. I think Mike just about had a heart attack when he saw that syrup bottle empty. <laughs> Oh, I'm about ready to hit the hay, maybe do a little bit of reading, and that usually puts me to sleep. But I decided tonight I'm going to take the little blue pill. So I told Joey he better watch out tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but but the, to be honest with you, this little blue pill is a Tylenol PM. There not, you go. Not what you think it is. I hope not. <laughs>
<laughs> you won't be able to roll over. <laughs> it keeps you from That's falling. Right. Keeps you from falling out of bed. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, guys, another absolutely amazing day. I'm eating one of the best apple desserts I've ever had. It's apple caramel glaze cake. Donnie's daughter makes it so good. She sent it up with us. Awesome. But all in all, the day was pretty incredible. The pike fishing was really not great. But Donnie got his PB. He got his PB again. Yeah. And then he got his PB again. So yeah. it was really cool to see the second and the third one pulling line out of his hand. And maybe one of the bigger fish you've ever seen ice fishing. Six pounds. Right. Yeah. Yep. I think the biggest one I've ever caught is a, a, a lake trout, a togue. It weighed five pounds. Through the ice. Through the ice. Yep. <clears throat> so, yeah. that is definitely the biggest fish. Never fished for pike before in my life. Yep. It's it's kind of a, a, a different uh, different feeling. Yep. So. so, we know they're here. We know they're big. It's just a matter of them biting. And today was really not a good biting day. So, we're thinking tomorrow between like 9 and 12, we're going to... We're gonna put a big one top side, or at least have a chance at a big one. The shore launch was awesome, Dudley style. Donnie loved that. He loved Dudley seasoning the best, which is so it, it tells me I'm not crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and we're saving what's left of it to get reverse engineered. We're gonna have the chemist get a hold of it and yeah. reverse engineer yeah. it. So if Dudley, out, Dudley, yeah, if Dudley doesn't get us the recipe, we're going to market with it, and we'll go to we'll let you guys know first. All in all, the wood stove's been incredible. This place is bone dry, even after cooking all that stuff on the stove. It's bone dry in here. It's hot in here. I'm gonna try to remember to get up in the middle of the night and throw some more wood in there. But like Donnie said, if I don't, it's no big deal. We no can handle deal. it. We ain't gonna die and. Oh. It just means you got to start a fire in the morning. So, yeah. If you guys have made it this long in the show, you're in luck because I'm going to give you guys a little forecast of what we're getting tomorrow. Other than the snow tonight, in the morning, Donnie's going to make his famous Donnie's Donuts. That's right. And it's just he and I here to eat them, so I really feel bad for you guys on that. But we're going to have Donnie's Donuts on the ice. Do you know how good that's going to taste? I do. So I don't even know if I'll sleep tonight. I'm so excited. I'm tired, but all I'm going to be thinking about is Donnie's Donuts. And then what else? You were cooking something else too. Tomorrow. Oh, I'm going to cook uh, cake, oh, right? I'm cooking oatmeal. Oh, for that's breakfast. right. I'm excited about that too. And later in the afternoon for a dessert for supper, I'm cooking a blueberry cake. Oh my gosh. If you guys want me just to start a new channel called Donnie's Cooking or Donnie's Camp Cooking, let me know. I've already had a request for to Donnie to put together a cookbook of what he cooks in camp and how he makes it and everything. He's so humble, he's laughing. But people would want to see that. I try to keep telling him people would want to see it. He doesn't believe me, so put it in the comments, guys. I'll show him your comments if you want to see Donnie's camp cookbook on what to cook at hunting camp, fishing camp. Other than that, thanks for tuning in. I'm going to fill that new uh, Winterwell Nomad large stove up, get this thing piping hot so we're on top of the sleeping bags, and then in two hours we'll be in the sleeping bags. Have a great night, guys. Thanks for tuning hey, in. Hey, good night. Take care.